I love mate selection. I love mate selection, attraction, and gender differences. Because we live in this society where they're trying to push these egalitarian narratives that men and women are equal. And in order to understand men and women and to understand relationships, you have to understand the differences between men and women down to the neurophysiology of the brain, which we have different uh, neurophenomenological processes that we exhibit as men and as women. Like women are more prone to fear. You know, men go towards a, a threat. You know what I'm saying? So, and then we have testosterone. Testosterone is, is the facilitator in sex drive in, in, in our proclivity for dominance and things like that. So these differences create the behavioral differences that you see between men and women. So to act like men and women are the same when we don't have the same amount of testosterone, we don't perceive the world the same, we don't love the, we don't love the same, we don't express ourselves the same, we don't react to the same stimuli the same. In order to understand these things, we have to acknowledge that these are the realities that between between men and women that have to be acknowledged and they have to be accepted. We can't keep continue to act like, you know, men and women, we, men can be women, women can be men. No, it's a lot there that, that, that just makes us distinct. We're, we're two separate sexes for a reason. Like you know I said, saying? they're trying to create a, a utopia. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create the perfect society. And you can't create the perfect society. We want a society where there's an equality of outcome between groups. We want a society where no, where everyone's a winner. Everyone can win. Everyone gets a consolation prize. Everyone is 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 uh, gets a participation trophy. And we want we don't want people to feel like they're incompetent. We don't want people to feel like fa failures or losers. And what you get with that is saying, oh, that person feels hurt. They're upset that they lost. Let's go console them and make them feel better and tell them that they're a winner too. Here's a consolation prize for your efforts. No, it don't work like that because as you can see now, what we're doing is we're placing feelings over facts. And when you place feelings over facts, you run into a spoiled society who becomes entitled and they believe that they aren't supposed to experience the realities that they don't like. So it's like when we talk about things like sociology and even a lot of psychologists and especially female psychologists, I really don't like female psychologists because they bring their female values into a field of objectivity mm. and it becomes watered down. They try to Whoa. push the same narratives that, and, 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 and it's true because Male psychologists, even though we're the minority of that that academic that group, so there are more women than men in oh, psychology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are way more women in the field of psychology than men, but men are the most cited. Mm. And is, is hey, it because hey. of their objectivity? It's because of their objectivity. It's because of our analytic, uh, our analytical thinking. It's because of our logicality. It's that simple. Man, wow. it's crazy. And, and listening to you, man, you speak with so much conviction. But even though you speak with so much conviction, I don't get a sense of e there's any emotion in your communication. Like, you seem to have this very, like, step back and let me look for things as, as how they really that, are. That's how I approach it. I, I, I compartmentalize my personal values. I compartmentalize my morality. And I just look at it for what it is because that's the best way you deal with reality. It's like being in the wild. You know, you go in the wild, we don't think it's fair that, you know, the baby antelope gets killed by the cheetah. That, that hurts people's feelings. It's like, oh, that's not fair, you know what I'm saying? But that's the repugnant reality that is nature. That's what we have to accept. So it's like me going, I sit back and I observe humans and I just want to understand why we do what we do. And my goal is to simply highlight these things and Wait, speak on it. That was a very interesting fact though about the objectivity that men just tend to naturally have in their essence. In our essence, we have this uh, logic-based you know, objectivity and how we see the world. And let me ask you this. Do you think a woman has the ability to even possess that? I will say they are capable, being objective. They're capable of it because we've seen examples of it. We've, mm -hmm. we, we've dealt with women who are able to accept reality for what it is. But the problem is that's not what they're taught. That's not what they learned growing up. They, they're daddy's little girls. You know what I'm saying? They're told that they're princesses. They have Disney movies uh, reinforcing this idea that, you know, they can find love and they can live a life of euphoria and bliss and happily ever after. Shit that's just simply not true. But what happens is it's instilled in them from such an early age that it becomes a part of their identity. They internalize it. And when they internalize it, it's it's a value that they take on without even being cognizant of that's where it stemmed from. And what when it's challenged, they experience this cognitive dissonance that puts them in a state of, oh my God, how could you say that? You're transphobic. You're misogynistic. You're sexist. And it's like, bitch, I'm being real. First of all, calm down. Mm. It's the truth. Why don't you step back with me, take a look, and you will see. But they have to want to see it. And, and it's interesting because 
what I what I want to tell you guys is it's extremely difficult for the human mind to be rational like that when you have values. There's a, there's a concept called sacred values, and these are the values that we've been taught from in very, very early age. It becomes a part of our identity, like I said. So the part of the brain that the sacred values are held in is shut down when they're challenged when it comes to logicality, reason. So like the frontal lobe is the part that's responsible for judgment, reason, rationality, those, those concepts. So the sacred values, whenever they're challenged, that part shuts down. There's no logic.